All right, folks, let me just show you where I'm at today with uh, this whole queen ring project. Hopefully it's working, but I won't know until a couple days when the queens are supposed to hatch. Um, what you're looking at here is those two mating nukes that I built. I actually built four, but this is two of them. Uh, and these are double-ended. We'll walk around and see the other side uh, here in just a minute. But <clears throat> the one on the right, I just opened up from vented to queen excluder. And the reason I did that was because I want the bees to come out slowly. And what I've watched them do is as I've released them, now they've been like this for 24 hours, so as I open that up, they come out pretty quick, but they're doing orienting flights, and that's what's really important to me to, to see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reach in here and open this one on the left, and then I'll back up and we can kind of watch them do orienting flights for a minute or two. So we'll just come in here. Again, this little disc is just a nice rotary disc, and you'll see as I turn it around, the bees will already start to come out. See, they come out just ready to go. Because they've been pinned up for 24 hours, they're ready to go. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> the way that I explained it was uh, that feed jar is sitting centered. There's a central divider, so that feed jar is half and half. So both sides can get to the feed jar, but they can't get to each other. So again, you see as the bees are coming out, I'm not sure how good you can really see them on the video. I can see more from the bigger picture, but they're coming out and they're making tight circles around the entrance. And they're gradually expanding those circles, and they're taking off you know, further distance. So that's exactly what we need them to do. We need them to make orienting flights so that they realize this is their new home, this is where they want to be. And I'm watching on this box here, there's already bees that are coming, that are flying off that and then landing back on that entrance um, and returning to it. So we'll just walk around here real quick. I mean, there's not a whole lot to see on the other side, but I'll show you just the other end. So see, on the other end, there's two more sleeves identical. So there's actually four small colonies inside these boxes. Each colony has two queen cells that I gave them yesterday when I did when I divvied everything up. So ideally, I could have four <coughs> four small mating nukes here uh, if everything works. The bottom boards that are on it, I actually <coughs> built to be bottom uh, single-sided bottom boards. Uh, and so what right now they're technically upside down, so that the box has a solid bottom on it. But if I ever wanted to make it a bottom board for a nuke. I just flip it over and then it has a 7 8 inch entrance where I can put a bourbon feeder on and look like a normal bottom board. This queen castle here, I originally moved frames with capped cells into from another hive over in the bee yard that we'll go look at here in a minute. Uh, that was a situation where I had a guy that desperately needed a queen, so I sold him the queen, just took her out of the hive, um, and as a result, the hive went queenless and started to raise new queens. Uh, Sad story is he took that queen home to his place, put it in his hive, left her cage for two days to give plenty of time for the bees to accept her, uh, went to release her and they killed her immediately. It turned out he had laying workers. Uh, luckily, he already had another queen ordered and she showed up the next day, so everything was good to go. Now on this box here, uh, it's a three chamber, so there's one side, two side, third side over there. So what I did was, this is technically a 10 frame hive. It's got three three frame chambers within it. And what I did was when I moved queen cells out, I put at least one, I tried to do two or three queen cells per section, and then a frame of brood and a frame of honey or whatever I could fit in there. The side on the far left, for some reason, when I did the work, I didn't give them a queen cell. I, I thought I did, that was the whole point, and apparently I didn't, um, which made a lot of the bees abscond from that side. They crawled, they managed to crawl through a divider or, or just crawled out and came around. I'm guessing they came you know, out this side, just crawled around and went to this side where there was actually some presence of a queen in the queen cell uh, and so within a couple of days um, this side on the left here actually got infested with small high beetle uh, they started rejecting larvae really quickly and within a couple days it was all lost so I went ahead and cleaned it out there's nothing in that side uh, and then this on this one here I checked on this one yesterday this side and this side both have hatched their queens and I have spotted both queens and one of them already looked pretty good size as if possibly she had mated uh, I'm not sure. She looked a lot bigger than a virgin. Um, the other one, let's see, that was the one in here, looked awfully big already. The one in here still looked kind of small. She was pretty. She was a tiger tail. So she might not be mated yet, but that's the whole point of this. This is a queen castle and or mating nuke. So we'll just uh, leave it as it is. You can see bees coming and going. So ideally with that, I've got two more queens, two more possible small colonies. So you're looking at possibly six small colonies there that I'll try to graduate just as fast as I can into bigger boxes but I want to leave them in the small mating nooks as long as I can or at least for you know a month basically let that queen get mated make sure she's laying once I'm confident that she's a viable queen then I'll mark her and I'll move them into uh, bigger boxes 
so they can grow out. But we'll walk across the yard here and I'll look at the rest of the bee yard and show you just what's going on. Um, take a quick look at my garden. Not that the beekeeping folks care, but there's some big tomatoes and I got a whole bunch of strawberry plants on clearance at Home Depot. The probably none I'm going to sprout, but we'll see. I got 70 plants. You're looking at 20 of them there. And I'm just trying to sprout them up in pots because I'm not going to put them in the garden. It's going to get too hot. I'm going to sprout them in pots, keep them in pots all summer so I can use that open garden space for something better like corn or tomatoes. Uh, so looking in the bee yard, um, you can see what I've done was I shook two of those that are in the mating nooks I shook from this hive here on the far left. Uh, probably could have reduced it down to a single body, but I didn't. It still had an okay population, had a lot of drawn comb. Uh, and then I shook the other two from that hive straight in front there on the opposite rail. Um, that hive I'm pretty sure has laying worker. It's got a real good population. I gave them a queen cell a couple days ago because I didn't see any presence of a queen. Gave them a queen cell in a protector, no less. Two queen cells, actually, and they tore them both down completely. Didn't just, like, rip them open and parasite, you know, kill them. Tore them down completely, which tells me either there is a queen in there or they're laying worker. Now, all I see is drone brood, which is making me think laying worker, but I didn't see the signs of laying worker with... I didn't see multiple eggs per cell. In fact, I didn't see any eggs at all. All I saw was capped drone brood. Um, so, I do believe it's laying worker. Um, I put a queen cell in there in a cage to see if she'll hatch. Um, if she hatches out as a viable virgin queen, then I'll take that box across the yard, and I'm sorry if you guys are catching wind, I'll take that box across the yard and uh, shake them out to try to relieve the laying worker issue and hopefully be able to release that queen. They're still, see, they're still bringing pollen in. I'm looking at them, a good population of bees. They're still bringing in pollen and sources, but there's no brood being built in that hive, so it's kind of on a death sentence. Again, all of the queen cells, sorry, trying to cover the microphone or protect the microphone. All of the queen cells came from that hive there on the far right. That's a very prolific queen. She's very gentle. I love those bees very much. Um, and I had, I believe, seven queen cells left over, and that was after I gave two queen cells to the four nukes, so a total of eight. Put one in that hive there. That it's, it's got the laying worker and was left with seven more, so that's a total of, uh, what is that, nine, 16? I think that's right, so... I don't know, and again, I lost a few along the way because I got two of them got torn down and whatnot, but I think I ended up with, with close to 20 capped queen cells. Um, but what I've got, I've got seven caged queen cells left in there to hatch out, and that'll serve as a queen bank. Hopefully I can come across some bees in the meantime to get some volume uh, to make a few more splits. If not, <laughs> I'll introduce those queens into a couple of these other hives that have a queen, but is not a very good queen. Um... Lastly, this hive, what I also put into it was I went ahead and put another frame full of queen cell cups. Put those in there last night. That'll give the bees a couple days to polish them. They really only need a couple hours, but give them a couple days to polish them. Uh, and then what I'll do is Thursday, tomorrow evening, I'm going to put royal jelly, prime each cell with royal jelly. Now it's kept refrigerated. So I'm going to prime each one tomorrow, put it back into the hive so that it will warm up. The bees, I believe, I hope, will leave that royal jelly in the cells, leave them primed. Uh, so it'll warm up to the hive temperature like it needs to be, and then Friday afternoon, uh, I'll do another round of grafts. That's the goal. Uh, I do have some bee work scheduled for Friday, which is pretty exciting. I'm going to be setting up a trap out on a boiler that's uh, down in uh, south of the Highlands, which is east of Houston, or southeast of Houston. Uh, the bees are in a large boiler. Uh, there's no way that we can disassemble the boiler to get them out, so we're going to do a trap out on it. Uh, and then once I get that set up, I've actually got another job where I'm going to remove bees from the wall of a uh, little shed that a lady wants torn down. And uh, she said, I can do whatever I want. She said they're planning on tearing the shed down, so she said, you can tear up whatever you want, we don't care, which is great. I love a job like that. I don't have to be careful. Uh, so I'm going to bring a hammer and crowbar and have some fun with bees, of course. So maybe I'll get a good population from that job. Maybe I'll actually be able to take some bees from that removal uh, and get enough that I can make maybe another shake or two and uh, go ahead and introduce them another mating nook or two. That'd be nice. But anyway, that's it for now. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on with the uh, queen grafting project. I hope to raise more. My goal would be to actually have enough queens that if I wanted to, I could just kill off a handful of them because I have plenty more in waiting. That's my goal. Not that I like killing queens, but I just want to have that many extra queens on hand if I ever need them. So that's it for now. I'm going to cut this off and uh, we'll see you later.